Hey, we're back. Oh my gosh, two shows in a row. Welcome guys to the Mo and O Photo Show. My name is Omar Gonzalez. And I'm Omar. And you know what my kid said the show should be called? The MoFo Show. (laughs) Hey now. Hey. (laughs) They didn't even know what it meant. Uh, I like you guys know. I told you not to say anything stupid. (laughs) I think that's, uh, wow. (laughs) It's a little, the MoFo Show. Yeah, we'll shorten it to that. We are a bunch of MoFos. How's it going, buddy? How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm trying to, you know, streamline this whole thing so we could do more episodes. So right now I have, if you go to the YouTube channel, we're on a fancy Omar and Mo labeled uh, with a background. So uh, with OBS. I, I saw it. It looked very pretty. I was very impressed by your uh, your work, your your handiness yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Let's very see if nice. it works. Who, who knows? Who knows? But uh, we have a humongous storm that's coming here in New York, New Jersey, uh, like the super, like 12 inches of snow coming. It's exciting. It's the blizzard of 21. It's going to end everything. <laughs> you thought COVID was something last year. Forget about it. It's going to be a ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Be ridiculous. So in this episode, we figured we'd talk a little bit about like new cameras that have come out, but also we are going to talk about, uh, what we thought of WandaVision, which is out on Disney Plus, with no spoilers. And we're not going to spoil anything. Just nope. super general talk. And then yeah. maybe we'll talk a little just, you know, photo tips or something. So let's start with cameras. What came out? A bunch of stuff come out. Come, I'll come out. <laughs> I like my words. A bunch of stuff came out. Um, Sony released uh, one camera. B- Fuji released two cameras. You did a video on one of them, so I'll ask you to go more in depth into that one. And then also Sony uh, Fuji released one of that uh, a lens that I wanted to try, but now that they're releasing this new version, I'm like, well, maybe I'll have to wait for that one to mm. come out. Um, so the new Sony is supposed to be the new big daddy of the house, right? The yeah, new wow. world it's, ender, the crusher of the all crusher. Crushers. That, it, it's now the camera companies are like flexing. Like, here's what we could do. And you know what? Cool. Like, let them charge what they're going to charge and let people buy that. We, I just want to see how it trickles down to the cameras that we could buy. <laughs> exactly. Are you going to add any of that to the a7 IV, which will probably be still just over $2,000 this year, as opposed to last one where it started at under $2,000? So we'll see. Um, but yeah, the, the thing about the A1, which I think is a really weird it thing is, right? to have a Sony Sony Alpha A1. So you're Sony Alpha yeah. Alpha 1. <laughs> <laughs> AA meeting. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, really question people in marketing. Like, let's name it the Alpha Alpha One, but we'll just call it A One so no one will know. <laughs> yeah, right away I knew there was going to be a lot of like steak sauce comments. <laughs> so, in, I like a hey, steak this sauce. camera is saucy, and everyone's just coming up with these stupid, uh, these stupid A One jokes. So, what I did was I looked at it. On paper. Now, again, I'm not Tony Northrup, so I don't have it in my hands. So um, I just looked at a paper, compared it to the A7R4, right? And it's got the, um, what's it got? It's got the the dual bionic XR sensor as opposed to just a basic bionic XR sensor. So I'm assuming that means it's going to be twice as better. It has to be. Twice as fast, (laughs) right? It's two of them. it has less megapixels than the uh, A7R4. It has the 8K video at 30, you know, frames per second. Speaking of frame per second, it shoots 30 frames per second, which is ridiculous. Um, it's got a better viewfinder. It's got 759 uh, points of autofocus as opposed to 567 on the seven on the uh, R4. Um, it's got a brand new version of Wi-Fi that's a little faster, supposedly. I guess that helps when you want to move your files yeah, it's off. It's funny. I, w- I wish they would redo the apps on a lot of these uh, phone transfers. Oh, my God. You know, like these, they, they keep making are... the Wi-Fi better, but like, man, put some R&D into the apps. Like, make them the best apps to get your pictures onto the phone faster. Someone said today that, that they're camera companies. They're not software uh... companies. Because I was reading something. I was reading something about um, I was I was looking to see I was having a problem with my audio on my on my camera so I was looking something up and the guy says using the software to set and the other I have problems with the Sony software and the guy says Sony is not a software company <laughs> you know they make cameras and they update your camera but once the software is out well, they don't could, care they're not yeah, gonna touch that we can that. tell by the menu system that they uh, 
Oh yeah. my god, it's like a DOS system, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm used that's, to it now. It's a, funny. A it's, it's, noise, um, I just saw the A1's new menu because the Sony A7S3 has that menu too. And uh, I'm like afraid to like learn a new menu. I kind of know where everything is now on the Sony menus. So, like, like you've been tortured for so many years that you know exactly where the pain points yeah. are. And you know how to you get there. You have to there. go. You, you just keep searching. Life. I go through. I loop. Used to loop through the menu like three times, looking for the thing that is in the wrong place. And the other, the only other difference is that they're going to be running an SD plus CS CF Express card. Um, where you know the uh, A7R4 is just double SD cards, so on paper, is is those things I listed is that worth sixty five hundred dollars? Yeah, it, well, I think it is. I don't know. I think it's a little overpriced, but I have no concept of who this camera is for. Like, obviously, if it's for a professional, sixty five hundred, if they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars, is no big deal. They just write it off. You know, it's like a business expense you know invest back into your business but my real question is which pros is this most useful for because like if you think someone covering a football game what do they need live 50 megapixel photos that are being ethernet to the newspaper or whatever they don't but they could appreciate that 30 frames per second yeah, right yeah maybe maybe it's for like nfl hybrid shooters it, it, i think this is the ultimate hybrid camera to the point where it may shoot itself in the foot. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Because think about it. It has 8K video, which people aren't really using it for the 8K video. They're using it so they could then compress to a lower quality and have... Do you hear that? I don't know. No. You, you don't no. hear anything? I apologize. There, there's there's some kind of loudspeaker going on in the background. I thought it was the cops or hey, something. Gonna... They're coming <laughs> to get me. They finally got me. They figured out where I was. All right. So, so, um, so it's got the 8K... Uh, 30 frames per second but if you're a photographer does that matter to you but if you're a videographer does the 30 frames per second monitor matter to you yeah. you know it's got a lot of great features in it and it's going to be the best jack of all trades it seems like but will it be a master of any that's the question yeah i know well it's definitely going to be the master of 50 megapixel sport pictures <laughs> with like 30 frames a second at 50 megapixels that's pure insanity it's insane. Like, like you definitely will have to be running at CS Express card unless, unless did we already discuss that some SDs cards can handle that? Because that's insane. Yeah, I was going to, I was funny. You said that I was actually going to say that all of this is a vicious cycle of having to buy new cards. You know, it, like for example, the Canon R5 seems like a beautiful, great camera for someone that shoots weddings and portraits, but now you got to invest almost a thousand dollars for the memory. If you're shooting a whole wedding, you know, uh, if you want to have redundancy and ease yeah, the ability to switch mid wedding that's such a junky um, the i mean the cards obviously have better technology but we we've used UHS1 at high burst 10 frames a second what do you need you need like the most is 8 to 10 frames a second you know and right. the SD1 can write fast enough it's redundant on two cards i've done that's 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 my question to you is have you have you gotten comfortable Will you ever get comfortable with a memory card to trust not switching it out mid-event to put another one in just to make sure nothing happens? Wait, I didn't understand. Because most photographers, <laughs> I didn't understand the question. I, I figured I had to break that down. So most <laughs> photographers, when I do a yeah. wedding, right? I do all the getting ready stuff. That's one. Oh, set of and you change cards. your card. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then I then I go to the, the the actual wedding ceremony. Then I change my card. Then I go through the ceremony all the way through with the rest of the cards that you know whatever I have left in the, in the in the slots until I fill up and then I replace. What's in your second slot? It's it's overflow. It's not overflow. I'm sorry. It's redundant. redundant. So you have that's what I do. I have a smaller card in number one, and a humongous one in number two that holds the whole day. Is that what you do as well? No, I don't. I I don't. I, no, no, I don't. I didn't think that far in. Yeah. Life. So I I learned that. So I have it just the opposite. I have it where. Two 64s, pop them out. No. Because one is feeding oh my God, that's into the so, other. I, I would two be so confused. Two 64s, two 64s. Oh, no, they're color-coded. Okay. They're all color-coded. They're all color they, were all, they were all color-coded to, you know, ceremony was, was yellow. Uh, pre, Pre-morning was blue. Actual anything after that was red. Yeah, yeah. 
No, I, I, I learned this from like another this. photographer in our area where you're talking. He was actually shooting Sony before I did. And he has a 256 in the second slot. That's what he taught me. He's like, mm-hmm. no, no, I put a 256 megabyte in slot two. Gigabyte or megabyte? Oh, gigabyte. Okay. Oh, we're good. <laughs> okay. We're I, good. I shoot it's really tiny, tiny family. JPEGs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tiny AKBs. AKBs. <laughs> <laughs> They're stamp size. Yeah. Oh. I no no you don't want to blow that one up. Don't don't blow that one up. No no no. It only goes stamp size, uh, and wallet. We do wallet here. But I was gonna say I I'm awful at knowing the, the. In my last video, I said yeah I have a hard drive here that's eight tetrabyte. It's like that's not even a thing. Wow. It's it's terabyte. Yeah. Isn't it terabyte? I was yes, tetrabyte, is. which is like a trilobite. Uh, or a te- no tetrapod, which is an animal with four oh. legs. Tetrapod, that's where that comes from. And your lesson was brought to you by Thank Omar you, Zones. yes. <laughs> but what I was going to say um, is, back to the memory cards, a larger one in slot number two that actually holds the whole job. And then what you do with the slot one, and you know the beauty of it? The beauty of it is you when you go home you take just card 2 which is one card that has the whole day and it turns out that those little cards that you were switching are the backup you know in case something went wrong with card 2 and then you plug in that really large card and your whole job gets put in and that's why you are a professional and I'm Yeah but I mean these are like, <laughs> these are little things you pick up I didn't I didn't come up with that system myself so you know what? And you just share that with me. So if I ever do an, an event and, you know, emergency, hey, Mo, everyone's broke their leg. We really need you to come out of retirement. I now will use that as my going forward. Yeah, I method. got another one I do for have... you. For Fujifilm oh, users, because Fujifilm users, the JPEG sometimes are actually more fun to share, more fun to edit. And so now the philosophy is the cards are switched. So in my first slot, I have the larger one like maybe 128 that will hold the raws. And then the second card holds all my Fujifilm JPEGs. It's a tiny card. And I keep them separate instead of uploading. um, What I do is I upload just the JPEGs in one folder, and then I upload the raws in a second folder. Gotcha. You know, and and so that's I like doing that too sometimes, especially if I'm shooting like the Fujifilm black and white when you take your card out that's all black and white and they all come in black and white it's pretty cool question speaking of since you brought it up uh i've noticed over the last year or so you're you're loading you're uploading to your instagram event day photos what's your process for that yeah so a dent uh it's so funny you said that because that's one thing one of my new year's resolutions is to get their the client's same day edit same day something and the mm-hmm. quickest I've done is I go to the car after the shoot. Like, let's say we did that temple shoot, and I'll transfer to my phone, and I could post right from my phone, like, three that I can see right away. I don't love doing that because my eyes aren't so great, and sometimes <laughs> I'll take one that's like, okay. the, uh, it focused on her ears. You, you label it the baby and it's the grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So uh, that yeah. is the quickest I've done is where I'm in the car and I share one. And the only danger with that is sometimes you scrutinize a little better on the computer. You know, go you go back and forth between two looks because I like sharing emotional photos. Yes, you and do. peak emotion changes when I shoot high burst. It changes from one to another. So I have this theory that if you share a photograph, if you share too many of the same emotional moment, they all lose their power. If you only share one of peak emotion, that image itself has so much more, you know, it holds the viewer a lot more than if they saw That's the st- gravitas you're looking yes. for. Yes. As opposed to them seeing the it, sequence of events, you know. Because they'll go, they'll go, oh, how nice, how nice, how nice, how nice. Whether they, if you shared those, all the ones, but if you shared that one, they're like, oh, I know. Look at that one. That is so beautiful. I know. So, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so the peak emotion, if you, I shoot high burst for emotional moments. And that's the danger if I'm in the car. I, I don't know if I have the peak emotion one. So uh, that's one thing I do. My second idea, which I haven't done yet, is to bring my iPad with a card reader 
because the whole wireless transfer is a little cumbersome. So taking right, right. the card and putting it into the iPad and grabbing one and editing in the car and posting is another idea I haven't tried yet. But the real thing is, if I'm shooting a temple session, I drive home, I upload right away. As I have lunch, when I come back, they're done. And I grab about 40 of the top ones and I send the client a slideshow same day with music. And then from those, I'll post two or three. I've actually liked like that when, whenever you did start doing that and I, I, I just scroll through your page and I know you're working and then you post something that that must be from today so that was really cool so I think that's nice you know I think as as a photographer it shows your flexibility as well the family members who who are following you because you see you have a group of uh, clients that not all of them but a group of your clients know each other so it's nice that they could yeah. just like Oh look! I, oh look! She's having the thing. It's yeah, so nice. Yeah, congratulations! They're all like, "Congratulations, Mazel Tov for today," and uh, so it is really nice. And it's it's you're competing with the phone generation. So these people are even when I'm photographing uh, grandmas and people, they want to take pictures too because they want to post and have today. And exactly. The, I was going to yeah, ask well, you. Yeah, well, we talked about this before, but my dream is to be have guy in chair, you know either at a portrait shoot or temple shoot or event that wirelessly someone is getting the photos and knows how to edit and post. Imagine that if you're at a party or wedding and you're shooting and guy in chair or girl in chair on the other side of the room is eating shrimp and editing and you know, <laughs> yeah, totally. exactly. it's a great yeah, day. So she's totally remote. She's got her Wi-Fi, and your images are wirelessly coming to her and she's, and, and you know, the bride, on a phone is seeing them come in people partying the toast like that is the future right there this whole thing of yep that's why they that's why the a1 has that new wi-fi you have like a long right cord there. you have that ethernet cable on the reception you're just like <laughs> what is that Shh, don't bother him he's working he's, don't don't bother him. tripping clients over the yeah i was gonna ask you like like you know when did you decide that that you needed to start doing that same day stuff was it was it about a year ago? Am when I right? Did I start. I don't know if I, I would say at, le at least the summer. Yeah, yeah. When you started back up, you know again, what probably. it is. It, it it comes right from the kids that I photograph because it started with like, oh, can you post? You know, I'll show the kid the back of the camera sometimes, and they're yeah, exactly. They're like clapping and they're like, oh, can you post that? Can you post that? And it's like before it used to be like i'm going to call these images i am going to star them i will then put a lot on them <laughs> lot. <laughs> a lot. i don't think we use lot crazy but, man. uh no. put a <laughs> preset on them and then post them two weeks later so that had to end if i you know the i'm i mostly work with teens and they are sharing instantly and you know so it came from the kids that i was shooting more than anything but um you know, I did a head. I, I, I did a headshot your... session with a CEO, and I gave him the images the same day. It's like it's where we're moving. We're moving to it. You know, we're moving to same day everything. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I did with the last few shoots. I did. You know, is exactly that. I just, you know, why? Two reasons. One, it, it's I'm, I, I was at the point where I was able to to edit the workflow, no problem, get it out quickly. And two, we all say this, and we should really focus on this. Is the faster you get a job done correctly, the more money you've made yeah, on that yeah, job. Yeah, for sure. Because you're 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 paying yourself, so you're paying yourself by the hour. Whether it takes you fifty hours to edit and get something out, or if it gets you, or if it takes you twelve hours, you become more efficient and you've earned more money for that job. Technically, yeah. No, I'll, I'll, if, even if you don't work in photography, bringing your images in and how you mentioned last week, like you you keyword some of them. I think it's important to start thinking of your photography maybe as a little job where you go out with the family maybe or on vacation and you take a bunch of snaps. Don't just throw them all on something. Bring them in, call, like pick the top ones and start saving those either in your own portfolio, in your own folder of tops and call and post or share with the family. But I know a lot of us, especially when I first started, we took tons of pictures. The, my family still doesn't see some photos because we take, 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 and we don't make, you know? Exactly, exactly. And then that's another another good point too, is 
depending on on the level of the the viewer watching this is is you really have to um look through your work and and and, de and decide not to share all yeah. your work good point it, yeah. it's important it's important that because two reasons you don't you don't want like Omar said in the beginning of this conversation is you want moments moments that grab that client if you give them all your work wh which one is grabbing your client yeah. let me let me ask you, know? you this cuz i've been on a couple the last couple of days i've been on like a couple of godox facebook groups i'm usually not on mm -hmm. facebook but i started going to a couple of groups because i had a godox issue and like people will post a photo like, you know, that they took with their Godox lights. And obviously the person's very proud of their photo and the photo looks good. But then I read the comments and the and they get I they get a bunch of people just telling them what, what they should have done. And the person didn't maybe ask for constructive criticism. And so what are your thoughts on that? Like posting images and then either getting constructive criticism or putting yourself out there when when you're proud putting yourself out there on a group and then kind of getting knocked down i could see a lot of people are like i wouldn't have i wouldn't have that goes back to human nature right that has nothing to do with that poor person posting that poor person like you said was excited happy and he posted that photo it's just people see something that they don't like and instead of, instead of just walking by and, and, and or bringing, depending what kind of group it is, if it's a group where you're, you're looking for constructive criticism in general without even asking for it because that's the kind of group it is, then yeah, you know, by all means, tell me what you think is wrong. But if it's, if it's a, a face group where, where you're just sharing stuff that you took using that product, people should learn to walk or, away. Yeah. And, yeah, that's the problem. People, people have to open their mouth and say something. People through internet are so strong, you know, fanboys, people in general, if it's not what they like, they have to tell you yeah. about it. That's the problem in, in, with human nature in general, though, I think, more than yeah, anything else. Yeah, and to play devil's advocate, sometimes I want to tell the person what they did wrong. I think it, you're right. It's in our human nature. I'm like, what were you thinking? You know, either the light is too far mm -hmm. away or... But then I have to take a step back and be like, maybe that's what they were going for. You know, like... Yeah. Exactly. What was their vision? It, because that's what makes us all unique, right? We all have our own vision. This guy wanted to take this picture and make it look like garbage, you know? And that was what he wanted, you know? He was looking to make it look like garbage because that's what him and his client discussed. So he nailed it the way he wanted to do it. In our minds, it's garbage. In his mind, it's exactly well, what. Let me give you the the example I saw. Maybe I could put. I don't know. I shouldn't put the picture here. But the example that I saw, someone took no a picture. headshot that they were proud of, right? Mm -hmm. And it was for a real estate agent. And the image looked like if it, I'll I'll do it for you, even though it's an audio podcast. The guy looked like this. He was kind of like, you know. And what mm. should a real estate agent look like? Like usually it's like on a white background. Yeah. And, and inviting and happy. But this guy looked kind of like a lawyer. Like it was like a hit, cool, super. So people, people but, were comment. The guy was proud of his image, but people's criticism or constructive criticism was that they didn't really like the pose and this and that. And so the thing with the thing of picking, picking which one you're going to see this problem. I'm sorry. So I interrupted you. Please no, no, continue. I'm done. Go. Okay, so the the problem is is do we know what kind of hardship he had to get that one? Oh, that's post? true. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 like. I find that there's some people you could just pull the camera to your eye and they're like, wop, wop. They're like the music model music is playing in the background. They're ready to go. They're posing. They're yeah. flexing. And then there's other people where you're like, no, no, move your, you move to yes. the left three inches. Don't, no, stop. No, no, no. Don't smile that much. Okay, stop. Open your eyes. So there's, 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 you know, Susan, stop it. <laughs> it's so true. I've had a bunch of people in front of my camera that don't have a sense of how their body should move. Like if you say, t look, look, turn your shoulders, they like turn all the way around or something. I'm like, no, look back at me. And they, they're like, you know, <laughs> like, no, no, don't move your whole body. Sir. And so, uh, no, that's it's the whole a, thing. sorry, I like was going to say so that people know we know what to do. We usually tell our clients to mirror us. So I, I, they, they, I just tell them, Hey, whatever I'm doing, you do, but it's funny. They can't even, some people don't have a spatial sense. 
Some people can open up a brain and take out the slightest tumor, but they can't tip that shoulder <laughs> yeah, down. Exactly. You know, it's you not know? brain surgery. That's... It's posing. That's why I can't yeah. do it. Give me brain <laughs> surgery. Yeah. So back to the A1. Oh, the A1. <laughs> It's too much camera. And I think uh, this is like one of those car shows you go to and you see the concept car, except here Sony is selling you the concept car that has everything you want. Uh, but most of us are okay with a camera that, or a car that is just a sports car that is 24 megapixels, like the A9. The A9 is, <laughs> it seems cheap now, the A9. A9, A9, A2, yeah. <laughs> So let me ask you this question. If you're saying it's too much camera, I'm going to segue here smoothly. Is is that when you should start looking at the medium formats, like the new Fuji? All right. Well, let's talk about the new Fuji. I think they're totally two different classes. Um, I see the Fuji X100's 100 megapixel as also flexing. If that camera would have come out with 50 megapixels and that same body that would have been amazing that would have been the portrait camera and i think even as a wedding photographer it would have been doable at 50 megapixels those 100 megapixel files each one is like 200 gigabytes tetra johnson's <laughs> they're 50 kbs come on stop it <laughs> 50 they're a gazillion kbs so um i felt like it was fuji's flex you know hey, hey here's the gfx 100 s Everyone's like, nice, but give me the, you know, X100V or give me. I mean, yeah. exactly. At this point, at this point, Fuji, it, it, it's not a smaller camera. Really, it's not because it might feel like a smaller camera, but the inside of it is still it's a big. massive, It looks like a DSLR, yeah. Camera. Yeah. So I think, you know, if, if they would have shrunk down the medium format camera, I might have even right? looked at it because I've always wanted a medium format camera, um, but not at 100 megapixels because I'm still mad at 36 megapixels. I can't imagine 100, no, you know? I, but you saw the video I did. I made that print and th uh, the oh, GFX so 100, hands down, are the most gorgeous photos I've ever taken. And not just megapixels. Contrast with color and megapixels all combined together. And detail. Yeah. I remember when you when you in the video you did you were you were looking at a guy at a window and you were so shocked about it. I was it's like, crazy, and you know wow. that's what it's good for. It's good for printing images that are viewable like an inch away. And I know when I've I've gone to galleries, I'm like, that's not that sharp. You know, I I've seen <laughs> uh, I've gone to like landscape people who sell landscape photos, and oh, it's not that sharp. I, I don't, don't want that. that. No. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Um, so it's about viewing what distance. About the this, this GFX, uh, I thought was great, but I was more excited for the smaller camera. The X-E4. Yeah, I just realized I had this weird light on here. Yeah. He's yellow, he's orange, he's sorry. blue. Yeah, there. All right, so the X-E4. Oh, sorry, I didn't ask you about your opinion on the GFX system. I don't have an opinion yeah, on no? it. Um, I, I've, I've, I've honestly... Um, Always wanted a medium format, but Fuji coming in, knocking the door down at 100 megabytes is just never impressive. Megapixels? <laughs> Look at you now. Megabytes. <laughs> Kilobytes. At 100 bytes of that sandwich. <laughs> Here's the thing. We all have different price points. And I think for a camera, I'm a professional photographer, and I love my $1,700 camera that can shoot events. You know, that's where it's at. I don't want to spend 3000 4000 5000 even if I could write it off for my business. You, you know, so it doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. That's what it is. You just you just brought something up so perfectly. People tend to buy what's new instead of buying what works. What works. Yeah, yeah. Because if I'm a portrait photographer, why do I need the A1? Right. Because it's going to make my photos better. No, because you're already putting out an amazing photo with what you have. People are coming to you to either ask you to do them a favor because you're new at photography or they're actually coming to you to, to pay you to do it because they like what you do as with what you have. But I, I'm not the one to talk because I buy a new cell phone <laughs> every other week, right? That. <laughs> but I'm but I'm saying I'm saying is that with with camera technology 
the the A6600 is almost a year old already, if not a year old already. Uh, I think it came out in November 2019, so it's over a year old. And wow, like it's over a year old. So so Sony's somewhere working on the A68, the A6800. 67. You know? Is there a 6700? No, but there wasn't a uh, 60. Uh, there wasn't one either for the. Um, Six. Uh, there wasn't. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's keep moving because my mouth is my brain just froze on me. So there isn't. Um, so the bottom line is that they're they're already working on replacing that camera, and this camera does everything I needed to do, and and actually stuff I don't even use. Like if if it wasn't because. It was such a low price when I got it. I would have got the sixty four hundred. Yeah, I love the sixty four hundred. You know, I started sixty four hundred yeah. has the has the the no limit recording, right? It has the almost the same sensor for photography. So there wasn't any real reason for me to pick this up. I don't go out and shoot with it where I need the image stabilization. So it's the whole point of people just want to get the brand newest of everything. Instead of just sticking to what Yeah, works. there's too many cameras out there. If you go on eBay and look up, you know, X-Pro2 or X-E3, I looked up the older cameras. There's just like tons of volume. Like pe there's just so many cameras that are older and are still good. They're only a couple of years old. And, you know, on YouTube, the videos that get a lot of likes and things are where people are like, I'm still using a Canon 5D Mark II. Or I'm, I still have my Nikon, you know, 701. I don't know how they number them. But, you know, so <laughs> it, it's cool to see someone that found a $500 old DSLR on eBay and is taking just gorgeous pictures. So I think, you know, I get question, I get asked all the time, which one should I get? Someone's like, I could get an X-T30 for cheap or I could get a used X-T2. Like, you know what? It's the X-T2 is a better camera. It's weather sealed. It's EVF is better. Um, it's got the dials. For most people, it's easier to yeah, hold. Yeah, it's a little larger and easier to hold. So, like, go for the, the X-T2. It's cheaper, you know? and it's still a good camera. So, An amazing camera. I was just talking to uh, one of our uh, one of our followers uh, on Instagram. Uh, he said, I, only, I still only have the X-T2. I'm like, it's dude. That's Having yeah. XT2 is is something, you know, that's a yeah, beast. Yeah. And it's going to snow Once, like crazy. That's the one I'm going to take out because it's older and if it breaks, I don't feel so bad. Yeah, I was hoping it would snow tonight so I'd go out tonight and take a take a quick walk out there, but I don't think it started yet. So let me ask you this. Yeah, Let's yeah. move on. Well, 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 bottom line is we'll, we'll do one more thing about the cameras. Uh, let me ask you about that new 27 millimeter F2 that's coming out that's weather resistant. Hey. How do you feel eh, about it? You think it's... I don't know. You, Fuji film, stick, you stick with yeah, the old Yeah, yeah. What they should have done is given us a new focal length as a, a pancake. And so what they should have done is, look, you got the 27 made already. Okay, it's not weather sealed and doesn't have the ring, the aperture ring. Why don't you make a pancake like 22? Or, you know, so they, they don't obviously want it to compete with other lenses they have. So, but... Right. They're making the same lens. They did that also with the 10 to 24. They they're making the same lens again. They made a 51.1.1.0. They already have the 56. You know, so it's kind of like they're all over the place with what they release and making the same lens because they wanted a smaller lens. I totally understand, but make it a make it make it a different focal length. Make it more street. You know, it's, this is supposed to be a little street camera. They should have right. made it a uh, a twenty three millimeter twenty three millimeter pancake, or pancake it more because it's not. It's not that, that pancakey. Pancake you know why did they have to make it you a know? two point eight? They could have made it more pancakey and make it a f four. Street photographer shoot at five point six f eight anyway, and then it actually would have fit in the pocket. They're like, this will fit in your pocket. It doesn't really fit in your Who's pocket. pocket. Yeah. Whose pocket? <laughs> like, am I wearing sweatpants all day? Whose pockets that going into? Exactly. So Fujifilm is like, uh, come on, man, come out with lenses that, you know, everyone wants them to remake the 35, the, what is it? The 33 millimeter? 35 F1. Yeah, the 1.4 version. 1.4. Yeah, why didn't they? The 35 1.4. I think people would have been happy if they remake that one. That lens is so good, but it's also so troubled. A lot know? of their lenses are... And that and then you so, know some people yeah. are like why do you shoot sony for professional because i'm not in the back of the church like <laughs> <laughs> it's mirrorless it's silent it's yeah, all quiet yeah. 
you know. All right, let me let, let's move on to something else because we want to start wrapping up a little bit here soon. Um, oh, let's finish with the XC4. Have, what are okay. your thoughts on it? All right, sorry. Um, the XC4 is a camera that has my interest in so many formats because it has the X100 S5 uh, look, all that stuff. But it lacks weather resistance, right? Yeah, it's not weather resistant for sure. It's so funny that the new it, lens is weather resistant and the camera isn't it. But the body isn't. Like, you <laughs> the know, lens here, survived. Here, hold my sponge. Hold this sponge that cost me $800 because it's it's useless. So, no, really, I was really looking forward to, to you know, adding a camera that I don't need to my collection. <laughs> <laughs> so hypocritical. Yeah, yeah. No, so adding a new camera to my collection that I don't need. But then I'm like, listen. Honestly, if it's not weather resistant, I just honestly would rather go with an old X100F, you know. Yeah. Because because to me, um I'm I can shoot with a 23 millimeter. I know It's a great That's focal what I was looking it's for. It's the best, yeah. <clears throat> that's what I was looking for in the XE4 to have the ability to swap out lenses, but not at the cost of weather resistance because when I go street photography, again, no umbrella and I don't know what's going to happen with the weather yeah. that day, you know. I just get up and go, and if it's raining when I get out there, it's raining when you I get out there. You still have the there. XT3? XT3, I yeah, love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that would be girl. that would be your your weather you know your weather camera. The set the setup right here with the 35 millimeter f2. This is a tank. Yeah, and that's all. That's you fully weather that. resistant there, so that's a good. That's it. The, it's a little big though. That's the thing is. Um, that is the. So thing, I pre-ordered yeah. it. And uh, I put it on pre-order, but my big knock on it is the crippling. Like, I know they wanted to design it, like, to be cleaner and to look like the X100. I totally get that. But but it's butt naked in the back. It's butt naked in the back. It's also butt naked in the front. They took the CMS. The, the autofocus selector? Yeah, and, okay, I understand you took it off, but the X100 has it on the side. I don't know if you remember. It has a little switch on the side, the X100. Yeah. Yeah, why didn't they put that on the X, you know, XE4? Because it costs eight hundred dollars and fifty cents. Eight hundred dollars and fifty cents. Here you go. I'll take all of them, please. All quarters. quarters so I did please. pre-order it because of the flip-up screen. I think that when I go out and shoot, I always have my GoPro to sort of you know vlog, and a couple of times I've brought the this sixty-four hundred because of the flip-up screen. And now the idea is if I only have one camera and like the 23 millimeter, you can vlog with a 23 millimeter. Now it doesn't have IBIS, but I rarely ever vlog and walk. I usually stop. Right. Huh? Right. No, I said right. I just find that yeah, funny. Yeah, I rarely vlog and walk unless I have the GoPro. The GoPro has amazing stabilization. But uh, if I was going to vlog with the little X... Uh, E4, I would just put it down on a tripod or just hold it on like a bench or something and uh, vlog that way. So that was my idea is that when I go out and shoot for YouTube, that I at least have a video camera too, you know? Right. And that's the whole thing. Like, I'm the same kind of vlogger. I, I, I don't like looking crazy. I know. And, and, <laughs> These... and, and like, like, like Casey does, He's... you know? I mean, God, God bless He's him. walking around. Obviously. He's walking around, bumping into people, having interactions with. No, that's just. I look for like you know? a hidden place in the forest. You know, it's like anyone here behind my car, ducking down. Hi guys, yeah. I uh, I'm here in the woods alone. I'm coming to you two from Siberia. <laughs> no one's here. Can you hear uh, me? Oops, someone's coming. I can't block. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go. So that's my list. What do you got on your list? Anything over there? No, I, I, I think the the bottom line is the same thing. All these new cameras just are it's useless. It's companies trying to make money. You could still get amazing images with the old stuff. Uh, it's the same with phones. Like eventually, what is the technology gonna do? I feel. <laughs> Shut up. You know, <laughs> you keep buying the same. Listen. Yeah. These these new cameras are are pretty. Actually, I'm not allowed to look at my phone today, so I don't even know where I put it down. But uh, I I think that the new cameras on the phones keep getting a little bit better. But I think that the cheaper phones still have amazing cameras. Yeah. I I think people are spending a thousand dollars for a phone that they end up spending that they end up using two hundred dollars worth of it. Oh yeah, for sure. So I think. You know, again, I, I'm a high tech 
phone guy. I use my stuff. I make films on it. I, I make audio recordings on it. I, I, you know, I, I scope out people from 50 oh, blocks away yeah. on this thing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> but, but if you're not going to use all these things, stop, stop paying for these phones. Yeah. Stop buying phones that you're never going to use the half of what it's for worth. For sure. Same, Same thing, thing with cameras. cameras you know? I think you're going to, uh, some of you probably would get more joy from your, maybe your first camera or that you're trying to learn photography a little bit more and want to quote upgrade is buying a good used camera that maybe two years ago was a thousand dollars and now you can get it for five or 400. Exactly. It's incredible value, especially if you pick it up from someone that hasn't used it as much and it's still, it's body's in great shape that you're going to have so much more bang for your buck and joy from that used camera. Mo and I say that all the time. One of our best videos is this old camera is your new camera. Exactly. Yeah. When I introduced myself back to the X-T2, yeah. it was a happy day in my life. And then I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's crazy. I don't know. Do you miss what the I X-T2? Do. You have the X-T3. So. I, I, I honestly, in the conversation I had the other day, I mentioned that when you left that sensor, you left you you went to a different look altogether. Yeah. So so the look of the XT2 is very unique. I loved it. It was it's it's something that I do wish I had, but not at the cost of the upgrades I got on the XT3. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think they couldn't push the sensor one more year, one more model, but I wish they would have. You know, because I, I, I think I loved that 24 megapixel yeah. sensor. It was just crispy, delicious. It was it was nice. It was it, it set itself apart from everything else that you I know, was shooting with. There's a, I think what what some people don't know or maybe cam- camera companies don't want to tell you that there's people who still love their X-T1 and their X-70s that were 16 megapixels. And remember I was telling you I was looking back at my old Canon 5D Mark II photos and they straight out of camera look like f- film. They have like the mm-hmm. same amount of detail to color to grain. And um, my Sony files look like super crazy television, <laughs> 8K sharp, you know, and they have to be massaged down to have like that organic feel. You have to squeeze the good juices yeah. out of them. Yeah. So they, the Sony files are, are that's the thing, is sharp. And best image quality doesn't always mean best image quality. So that's what the X-T2, X-T1s were about. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's something you can't, something you can't put into words. Something you only can see. It's, 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 it's a non-sterile look. It was a lived-in yeah, lived look. In look. You always say happy, that, and I totally agree. Yeah, it's a lived-in look. You, you just could just be like. You could have taken that picture, but it just looks 100% better because it was edited by a professional. Yeah, you know? totally. But that's something that I think, yeah, buy, buy XT2 with everybody. <laughs> buy them up. <laughs> buy them all now. Oh, man. Anyway, we've gone a long time, and we didn't talk about uh, WandaVision no, no, or about Wonder Woman. But... We promised. We promised Wonder, Wish- Wonder, Wonder Woman, Vision. And now we did. Wonder Vision. No, let's talk real quick. It's not much we're going to talk about Wonder Vision. Um, yeah, we don't want to. Oh, this is spoiler free, by the way, so that you don't stop the video because yeah, so no. I we talked beforehand and I I don't like I don't watch any previews or anything. So I don't like any spoilers. So our review here is very vague. It's not even a review. It's just to say that I think Omar everyone dies. That... Everyone <laughs> dies. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't watched WandaVision yet, um, get yourself onto Disney Plus and watch it. it's it's 30 minute episodes so far this has been four and it's a class in storytelling it really is. it's taken us from why am i watching this to oh my god i can't wait till next week and 30 minutes is such a long time until you realize it's not a long time and then you just don't get enough i think this has been one of the best storytelling I've seen. I was years. about to say, in a world, in a world, in a where world, everything's been done. It's yes. refreshing to see some originality and a new take on characters we love. It's not, you know, it's kind of like if you took Indiana Jones and you did something different with him. You know, I don't know what you would do with him, but not, not, <laughs> not, 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 not with skull crystal skulls or anything like that. Yeah, but but the the good thing about this whole process is that 
we're seeing something in this show that when it was originally announced, I didn't expect Disney to let happen. You yeah. know, I thought they would they would familize it so much that they would ruin the story. But there's been there's been stuff in that that show that. Wow. It, wow. wow. Definitely you know? wow. Especially the first two when you're like big question mark over your head. You're just still enthralled with what's going on. And it, it, it's right. it's about the fourth episode when you start to like, they start to unveil the curtain. So they did something that I hate. They they didn't do something that I hate shows do. Uh, you know, some shows just string you along through six and seven and eight episodes and you still don't know what's going on with stuff. You know, so I thought mm-hmm. it was great that, you know, you got three of confusion and now by the fourth one, they're starting to like help you out a little bit with what's going on. So I thought that was cool. But um, I know shows like Stranger Things sometimes, which I love, you know, it's just like, man, come on, we're dragging this story out. Let's just find out what's going on. Stranger Things and Twin Peaks, the master of keeping you confused. Yeah, yeah. You know? And remember, look, remember no the show Lost up. that was like, they didn't Lost. even know what was going on. They're just like writing. <laughs> the director said, action. Yeah. <laughs> What's our Hey, line? did you see Tenant, by the way? Tenant? <laughs> no, I, I, it's on the things that do list. Tenants and little things. I got to watch okay. those too. I won't. Uh, it's Christopher Nolan, but. Um, oh, yeah. That's why I want to watch it because I love his yeah, work. Yeah, good luck. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's typical Christopher Nolan. Yeah, boy, okay. it is the most confusing movie I've ever. You won't. You won't even when I watched the breakdowns because I watch. I don't watch anything, so I didn't even know what it was about. It wouldn't have helped. <laughs> it wouldn't have helped seeing a preview, and then watching break. You said here on the map. You will have <laughs> no idea, man. I'm telling you. You watch it. You still will watch breakdowns that will break the movie down with maps and animations trying to explain. You still won't get it. Isn't that like Joker, though? Like, honestly, like how many different ways you can interpret the Joker? No, this is different because this is a, a story that's confusing. Oh, is it is it a good is it a good story at the end of the day? No, I hate it because it was so confusing. But yeah, but okay. I will say this. Fun? I hated it. And then I was reading comments where someone said I hated it on second watch. It was genius. So I was like, maybe, maybe So are you going to give it a second watch. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all, all right I mean. and then quickly wonder woman we mo and i had talked about this like off the microphones just a bit but i was hugely disappointed in wonder woman um i was telling my son you know in superhero movies at the end of the movie the hero always fights the boss right like it literally in this one she's fighting a boss <laughs> he's like a ceo you know oh it's not even a fight, is it? <laughs> I know. That's that's the disappointment. It, she, it, it came to a talking to. <laughs> I'm going to have some stern words for you, sir. Yeah, and you know, I thought we were done with bad physics in movies, but that mall scene in the beginning, I'm like, I can't understand her physics. Like, her lasso is pulling her, but, like, also stretching and, like... Like, like, why couldn't you just make her fly? Or and, she can and, jump. And, like, why, why does she need the lasso to get why up? Why did you have the lasso? Yeah, why does she need the that lasso so... to get up for, like, it's in the mall. You know how, like, a mall has different levels? <laughs> like, she has super legs. You know what? When watching it, I, I, it bothered me, but not to the point that I remembered it. But when you brought it back up, instantly the, oh, yeah, that stupid lasso scene. It was just, yeah. it's just like, it's like, here's what happens when you let Hollywood people direct and produce movies that they take over how it's done instead of letting the story tell itself they have to interject their own self like she was very proud of those scenes there was so many things that she was so proud of that i was like you should have left it alone yeah. oh my god <laughs> you should have left it alone oh then when we uh, see i'm about to say some spoilers no spoilers, no spoilers but overall oh. if i had to give it a grade i would say it's a d the, it's it's to come from such a high peak that she created to fall that yeah. far. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a D. The it's first one had so Everything. much. Emo- the, the only thing annoying about the first one were like the bit characters that they put around her. You know, Chris Pine was great and she was great. But then they were walking around with these three morons that were terrible. Right. Uh, that was the only weakness. Right. Uh, but that movie was shot beautifully. It had great action and it had great emotional pull. This one was a lot of Diana, not a lot of Wonder Woman. And I don't understand why she was like 
she comes in and she breaks the video. There's a scene where she breaks the video cameras in the mall, like to not be seen. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> what? Because she got all of them too, by the way. <laughs> bip, bip, I'm done. Oh yeah, boy. Anyway, that wasn't a spoiler, was it? So yeah, no, no, it was, but it's okay. We didn't, we didn't like the movie. Um, <laughs> But but I'm already hearing talk that the the new the third one is being greenlit. Hopefully it'll be better. And I'm tired of seeing the little Diana. We don't need to see her running around. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Like 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 it's like you know too many like uh, Spider Man retells. You know it's just stop. Grow up already. Grow Wonder up Woman. already. And you know what they they did do what I I don't know if you remember. Let's see. Let me test your memory. I told you what I wanted to see in the Superman franchise. Do you remember? Like how they could. Yeah, yeah. You want you said you wanted them to go back in totally. time, and, and and do it from that point instead of a 2021. Yeah, I wanted Superman in the 50s just because of the classic cars, and you know that that was the peak of Superman, like when there was a Superman show and the Superman comic, and I think everyone in so 1984 wasn't good enough. 1984, they didn't use the 80s, you know, like no. That could have been 2029. You know, you could not tell. Man, well, and the, the, their fashion, like, it, it wasn't even like 80s. It didn't have an 80s feel like Stranger Things does. You know, they didn't use the sound. There was no soundtrack, kind of like uh, how Captain Marvel used the 90s soundtrack. They didn't do any of that. If you didn't know that WW84 was for 1984, you would not know anything that that movie was based in the was 80s. Was it based with was it 84 because of the novel 1984? No. No, that's just because they wanted to go incrementally in her path to the oh present. Gosh. They should have just said Wonder Woman Part 2. <laughs> you know what? That would have been fine. <laughs> Agreed. And is Superman coming back? Is he doing another movie? So, um um Cahill? K uh Cavill. Cavill has definitely signed on to enter other oh, people's okay. movies, like the Flash movie, the Batman movie that's being done after the Harry Potter, not the Harry Potter, the the vampire guy. What's his name? Vampire guy. Uh, uh, from Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson, who played one of those oh, Twilight, 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 Twilight vampires. So after his movie, there's supposed to be another Batman movie. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I, I wormholed YouTube, wormholed myself into watching the Batman that Patterson is doing, like a, a, a preview, a trailer of it. And I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing so far. You are so liking far. or not liking? I am liking okay, what I'm cool. seeing so far. I, again, I'm, 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 an, I'm a rarity. I'm one of the few people that liked the Ben Flack, the Ben Affleck ben Batman. Flack. <laughs> ben Flack. That's like gas. <laughs> Oh, Alka sells stuff for that. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, twenty twenty one is shaping up to have a lot of great movies come out. Supposedly, the Vider, the Spider Verse two movies oh, coming good. out. Uh, is that Spider? No, the regular Spider Man oh, movies coming okay. out. Sorry, Tobey Maguire. The, the is that your real Spider Man, <laughs> Tobey Maguire? No, the Tom Holland with oh, the other okay. Spider Man. I thought Tobey was movie. coming back. <laughs> And that's what I like about what they're doing is that all these shows are going to tie into the new Marvel Phase Four, you know, poor or Phase Five, poor whatever. COVID time because uh, this whole like you know uh, Black Panther two and you know Doctor Strange two and Black Widow, they they're all like on hold and stuff, you know. How do you feel about uh, the the re-release of the remastered version of the Justice League? Are you are you interested in that or you don't care? Um, I don't know. Does it change the story at all? I didn't see Justice League. So, so Justice League was started by Zack Snyder. Something happened in his family where he had to pull out. They brought in Josh oh, who's Whedon, the Avengers director, yeah, who bastardized the the, the movie, recut, did this, was famous for that Superman mustache thing because he yeah. Henry couldn't shave his mustache. Um, so. The studio has paid so much money to Zack Snyder to recut it. And it's way. out? It's it's on? It's coming this year. Within the next few months, it's coming out to HBO Max okay. only. And it's going to be a three-hour movie. All right. Originally, it, originally, it was going to be like Wonder Vision episodic. But then, like a couple weeks ago, they announced they're just going to do one three-hour movie. All right, movie. cool. 
So I, I'm looking forward to it because it has to be better than what well, they put listen, out. Well, listen, these streaming services have to keep stringing us along with things like this because people are going to unsubscribe if there's, you know. Exactly. Speaking of exactly. unsubscribing, you, just do that right don't now. Don't you do it. Hit, you hit do the it. unsubscribe button down below. Twice. And then hit this button here. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse psychology. Hey, to you guys for over Reverse an hour. psychology. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's very smart. Very All right, smart, guys. Man. All right, man. That was fun. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Omar, thanks for being yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Mo and I are going to talk at. for another hour after this. Unrecorded. It's the X-rated show. Mm. <laughs> you know what? We could create our own membership channel for that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. Thanks so much for hey, listening. Listen, if you're in America, support your American Girl oh, Scouts. They're, these cookies are yes. delicious. toffee tastic. Uh, Omar's daughter uh, was my usually hitter, but uh, I didn't get any She's contact. Old. What? There's an age limit? <laughs> you can't be 45 and <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, all right, see you good. High five. Next time. You have to like this video and share it and all that good stuff. Bye. Sponsor us. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This way. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.